Hi folks, this is Nathan with the ebookreader.com. So today for this video review, I've got the Onyx Books T68 right here, and I'm going to show uh, how it handles PDF files. Uh, so since it runs Android, you can obviously install some different apps to open PDF files, but the uh, device's uh, built-in PDF reader, the Onyx reader here, works pretty well. So let me show you the features with it, and then I'll show you Adobe Reader a little later. Uh, but for the most part, let's just focus on this uh, built-in PDF reader app right here. It's got a good amount of features. Um, we've got like the little uh, page jumper right here. We can enter a page number for jumping around the PDF. Um, if we hit this right here, it doesn't always react. Sometimes it seems to have um, responsive issues with the touch screen, especially at the bottom down there. But once that pops up, we have the different reading modes. So you got the panning mode, you got the scribble modes as well. So we're in the normal mode right now. If we go to scribble, you can actually write on the screen. And then save it that way. There's some different sizes right there. Um, <clears throat> we'll go super bold. And then we've also got the functions. Oops. See, if you hit the back button, it takes you back to where you were. That's how you exit the app. I'm always seeming to want to push that to back out of modes, but that, it doesn't work that way. So now we're back to the normal mode. So let's go ahead and show some of the other features for this app. Let me go ahead and go to a clear page here. Okay, so basically if you just tap on the center of the screen or you hit the menu button, you get up uh, the options for all these different um, settings in here. We can go into the main settings menu and that's how we display this footer at the bottom. Uh, so it was kind of annoying in regular ebooks because you didn't use it much, but with PDFs you can change the modes for like scribble and stuff, so it's a little bit more helpful with that. Enabled for PDFs, of course you can set the page margin, but that's just a little bit different right there. I don't even know if that would work with PDFs, but PDFs have their own... <coughs> options right here for zooming so we were viewing the page right now uh, if we can switch into the other zoom modes to zoom to width so we can get rid of the margins that way and another way to get rid of the margins is to use the auto crop I think it gets rid of them a little bit more than that one does actually yeah it goes in a little further so then when you turn the page it'll scroll to the next bottom part before it goes to the next page So and then you can also just like manually zoom in and out with the dial here. And if you use this, the wheel down here, it'll zoom in and out as well, but it does it so that it reflows the PDF. I'll show you in a second. And so you can use the selection too. So let's back out to page. And then you can use this selector. Uh, I haven't been having too much luck with this though. It just sort of hit, it's hit or miss. I'm not sure I'm using it right because you're supposed to move these lines in right there, but then it moves the one on the left side over. So. Then you're supposed to long press to confirm. Usually it just goes to this white screen right here. It doesn't really show anything. Sometimes it goes a little less, but I don't know. See, there I get, I hit the back button again because I'm always thinking that'll exit the mode, but actually you have to go back in and hit the zoom and then go back to page. So yeah, that one's a little bit weird. I haven't uh, been able to get that to work very well, this whole selection thing. If you just hold without moving anything, it will work. When you move those lines, it invariably ends up making the screen go blank because it doesn't adjust to where you want it. But then you got this huge margin on the left, so not exactly sure how that functionality is supposed to work. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so some of the other features in here. If we go into font, there's this little bold thing. Uh, actually, I haven't enabled right now. So initially, the PDF just looks like this. And it's actually quite dim, as you can see right there. So the pinch zooming, I would have thought that this app would have had pinch zooming, but it only works sometimes. And then what it does is it switches it to reflow. So it's like I was saying when you use this, it switches the PDF to reflow mode. And then you can increase the font and zoom using that. So let's go ahead and back this back into cropped mode so we can get see what it looks like a little better here. So uh, yeah, as you can see, the text is pretty light there. I'm kind of jumping around all over the place here, but then once we hit the bold, it definitely makes it easier to read and darker. So uh, one thing that I get confused with this app sometimes is I'm wanting to jump to a page. Now you can hit that and jump to a page specifically, but to get the table of contents, it's actually in the notes section. So uh, yeah, it's over here in the notes section, and then you can uh, jump to pages that way. 
So let's talk about the on-screen features here. So if we hold down on a word, you do get the highlighting options. A lot of times it seems to select more than one word though, like if I'm trying to just hit one word, it seems to, sometimes you get the selecting word failed. One thing with this touch screen is it's a little inaccurate. Sometimes it responds to things lower than where you press, so I'm kind of getting used to that. Sometimes if you press a little higher than like the actual word, it works exactly how you want it to, so then it just highlights that one word. And from there you can obviously add uh, highlights, you can add a text note, we can go ahead and look up the word in the dictionary. It just opens the quick dic dictionary. Okay, so some of these other uh, options, like I said, we can add the, the highlights. Let's go ahead and highlight this paragraph. A little bit off, but we got most of it there. So we can add the highlights and then obviously that gets added into your notes section. Alright, so some of the other stuff in here. Uh, we've got the text to speech is also available in the PDF app. And of course you can set the um, paging right here so you can set it to scroll or single page. So if you want it to go up and down you can set it to scroll. Obviously, we've got the search, and you can set the page refresh in there, just like with eBooks. So that's basically how the PDF app works on the Onyx uh, Reader app, the base default reading app for the uh, Onyx Books T68. Uh, like I said, you can install some other reading apps. Uh, I really haven't messed with them a whole lot. I did try the uh, Adobe Reader. Let's go ahead and show you. Okay, so this is a look at that same PDF in the Adobe Reader app. Obviously, it has some additional features. Uh, it's not optimized for ink, so it's not quite as nice as the Onyx Reader app, in my opinion. Just because uh, the scrolling's a little bit off, awkward with the way the screen refreshes, but it actually works pretty well. You just got to get kind of used to that weird squirrely refresh. We can go ahead and enable performance mode too, so it makes the scrolling a little smoother. But uh, basically, the app has the same sort of features a lot as the built-in app. I mean, you've got the Notes and highlights right here. You just copy and the highlight, strikeouts, underlines. You got those on screen features. You can move the little dial at the end there. So we got the other settings options up here. We got the different view modes. So if you just want to do the single page instead of the scrolling, you can go that wise. And then when it turns pages, it still does that animated effect though. So it's kind of the weird, but it does work pretty well. And if we hit that right there, we can actually pull up the go to page. The other uh, options up here, run a search. I got no searches in mind at the moment, however. Add bookmarks. That's the text. Uh, the um, on-screen application. Could do the on-screen markup in the Adobe app now too. Cut the different gradients and so yeah. Overall, this app does work pretty well on the Adobe Reader too. And you got the different Adobe export options and all the Adobe features. So it does have some advantages of its own if you're familiar with that app. Alright, so the pinch zooming seems to work a little bit smoother in this app. Of course you get all the constant ink refreshing, but you know, it's not bad. It's, a little, it's pretty smooth anyway. So the page <clears throat> page buttons don't work in this app, just like any third party app, because it's not hard coded for it. And these ones actually don't either, the, the wheel buttons, but you can got to use the page turns. So you can definitely get more ghosting in this app since it doesn't do the refreshing, the full page refresh like the uh, built-in Onyx. So I wanted to test this app just to see how it, the uh, built-in app, to see how it handled like a large PDF file. You know, it does seem to work okay. Just the same as it did with that other smaller app. It didn't take really any longer to load or anything. Page turns a little bit slower. But you know, it's not bad for being a graphic, graphic heavy uh, PDF. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up this review right here. Check out the ebookreader.com for some additional details. I also got a bunch of other reviews for the Onyx Books T68. And uh, thank you for watching, and you have a good day.